Hey guys, World Eater here. Today, we're going to be putting two familiars against each other. That's going to be Aladdis and Glarsdos. Oh my god! Okay, it's happening! Everybody stay calm! What's the Everybody procedure, everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay calm! Let's get into it. Alright, to start off, we're going to go to our schematics here. And we're going to type in Glarsdos. Now, if you don't have anything pop up, it's just because you don't have the <laughs> schematic. If you guys need any information regarding both Glarsdos and Aladdis, I go into a little bit of a deeper dive in my familiar review, which is going to be linked in the description below, both for Glarsdos and Aladdis. Let's go ahead and check out Glarsdos. You are dirt! You make me sick, you big baby! Glarsdos comes with 25 damage reduction, which caps out at 75%. They have a decent stat pool, but you can see here, for my total stats, his HP is at 18,000, which I'll get into later on. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the build that I pre-built here just for Glarsdos. Now, this is going to be the build I always recommend to everybody if you are using Glarsdos as a bait familiar. I'll go ahead and tell you the changes I would make, and I'll tell you why right now. So all across the board, damage reduction. You wanna get as close, if not exactly, to 75%. You never wanna go over unless you really don't mind wasting it or that's your only option. So I'm currently, with these perfect pumps at Mythic Quality, I am at 70% damage reduction. I'm 5% shy of that 75%. I'm totally fine with that. I've tested so, so many types of dungeons and different types of content that that 5% just never ever made that big of a difference for me. So I'm fine with 70% and here's why. I don't like damage reduction in the chip thing as you always go way, way over the amount of damage reduction needed or capped. Heal power is my favorite chip on almost any bait that has a self heal, which if we go to skills here, you can see they have three healing abilities, one self, one shields teammates, and one heals target. All of those are phenomenal. The heals target is very viable if you're doing something like a Glarsdos sandwich, which is just you as a DPS in between a bunch of Glarsdos, or you as a tank, a bunch of Glarsdos, and a DPS familiar in the middle of it all. That's usually the best way to use that ability is to heal whatever Glarsdos needs the heal. Going back to the augments here, I always, always, always recommend for the skeletal lining to be this one, which is while below a certain percentage health, heals received are a certain percent more effective. The reason why I like that is because it's a guaranteed bonus that you're going to be receiving. It's very, very good for baits, especially if you get low, you need those heals. That's going to be making that self heal along with that heal power chip get you from zero to full almost every single time. Now, the only thing you would replace this with is if you are doing what I mentioned earlier in skills, the Glarsdos sandwich, which is going to be if you have Glarsdos as your main tanky type of familiar, you're going to need a redirect chance bone, epic or better quality. Never go rare or below unless it's really all you have, but I would say definitely aim for a legendary redirect bone it's something that everyone should have in their arsenal at all times if you get multiple save them you're gonna need two to four redirect bones just to have for any type of scenarios you may come across definitely two redirect though definitely have two redirect bones on hand so that's gonna be the only replacement I recommend for this. You can also do the 30% chance to be evaded on your first hit, but this is, in all my opinion, the best bone to have on any tanky type of familiar, period. Let's go to the brain. Now for the brain augment, I always use a spread heal and spread shield when you get hit on Glarsdos. You can obviously use something like an attack team, attack random or attack closest in PVP, but in my opinion, this is the best layout for all content in general. This to me is the strongest Glarsdos can be, minus having a mythic version of this bone, of course. This is the strongest version of Glarsdos there can be in the game, period, when it comes to sustainability and all around team use. Now let's go ahead and go back to the schematics here and type in a lattice.
To start off, a lattice can actually be fused into a mythic familiar, which makes them a little more viable right off the bat, just by looking at the schematic. I don't have first year schematic, but I'll go ahead and put it on the screen right now. Unfortunately, Glars Dose doesn't go into any other familiar, so once you make them, you're stuck at Glars Dose. Let's go ahead and check out a lattice now. Now, as you can see here, a lattice is not a damage reduction familiar, but they are a bait just by looking at their stat spread. They do come with a 30% evade chance, indicating that they are an evade style bait. They have a measly 5% air resistance, which really doesn't help too much, if not at all. So let's go ahead and get into the build right away. So the build is going to be all across the board evade chance. Now, if you do have mythic evade pumps like I do here, he will be capped out at 75%, which is the evade percent cap. That makes him extremely, extremely easy to cap off. Um, the only downside is, unlike Glars Dose, you can't just use a chip or a bone to get that missing damage reduction, or in this case, missing evade. So if you have epic or legendary pumps, he does get weaker. You do need stronger pumps to make him shine. If you don't have at least legendary quality, you will be well, well below 65%, I would say, evade or around that, which is not the greatest, but it's still pretty good. So going onto the chip, heal power all the way. Heal power is one of the best chips on a bait, period, unless you need more damage reduction to make you tankier. Heal power, and I'll go ahead and show you why in a second. And for the bone, I love the same exact bone. Um, again, if you do have an Alatus sandwich, which is the same thing as the Glarsto sandwich, just with Alatus, you're going to want redirect bones. And the brain is going to be the same for both and every type of content. Honestly, these three are almost always going to be the same in every type of content if you want the best results, minus maybe the chip in a few scenarios and maybe the bone in a few scenarios. But everything should definitely be the same on the top if you're trying to compare them fairly. Let's go ahead and go to skills. Now you can see right away, just going back to the stat spread real, real quick, that you are going to be using your skills a lot more often. You do have a lot more in agility, which is very, very good for some people and very, very bad for some people. A lot of people think that, you know, having too much agility or as some people may know, like speed in a bait familiar makes them more of a useless familiar. But in my eyes, that just makes them more of a hybrid style familiar. I've always considered a lattice as a hybrid bait healer or bait support, as some people call it. Some people just refer to them as a bait, but the reason why I consider them a hybrid is because they have a lot of stat and agility, and they have a lot of healing and shielding in their kit, okay? They have a target ability, a random ability, which does twice the damage of that target ability. It is twice the cost, but if you're going to be getting your SP, you know, that quickly, which you should be with this speed, pretty decent. Um, you will be using this a lot and this is really really good to use when the last familiar left is a boss familiar and you just need a nuke them out this can help you do that damage just seeing these abilities just seeing the layout just seeing that you can max out the evade with just the pumps you can actually go a more offensive style lattice if you like and make your brain when you get hit an offensive brain or per turn offensive if you would like you can use them with an empower kind of bone or some kind of extra damage chip or all empower pumps if you want it in pvp that would be the only difference you can really make to make them shine in certain types of content of course now going back to what i said earlier about the health on a lattice and glars dose i'm going to go ahead and go back to my normal familiars down here not trying to show off, but I'm going to show you some examples of why I believe Alatus is better. We're going to go ahead and start off by going to our legendaries, and we're going to start off by locating Glars Dose. Glars Dose is right here. For my total stats, 18,376. So just remember 18,300. 18,300. We go back up to the top here, right? Most people are going to be using or aiming for a legendary dps or mythic dps so that's what they're going to be going for which is important to take into consideration you don't want to go based on what you have you want to go based on what you are going to go for you never want to plan for now you want to plan ahead so let's go ahead and scroll down here so drazig obviously he's not stable but it doesn't matter 
you can see that Glarsdos can bait for Drazic. Melborg, you can see Melborg can be baited by Glarsdos. Keep going down a little bit, and I'm just picking some DPS picks that are very, very common. Um, who else do we have here? Some people like making somebody like some people go for Wizbot. Wizbot cannot be baited by Glarsdos. We have Ovis here. Ovis can be can be baited by Glarsdos, which is very, very good. Chedza Naiki can definitely be baited by Glarsdos. We have Thezeron, which is kind of a whack pick, but they can be baited by Glarsdos. Um, who else do we have here? Kraken can definitely be baited by Glarsdos. Euclidus can be baited by Glarsdos. Now, as you can see here, those were all tier 13 and prior picks, okay? So I'm going to start going on to more mid to late game picks, which is what people tend to look at once they start looking into a future path for a better familiar. Panguita, good sign. You can bait with Glarsdos. Very, very good sign. Lambio, you cannot bait with either or. So that's one right there. Let's go ahead and go down here. So some of these familiars I'm about to show you are not max stable, but I can tell you right now, their health pool is very, very close to Glarsdos' health pool. Uh, whether it falls short or is slightly above makes it pretty much a risk factor using Glarsdos as a bait familiar for any of these DPS. Anything around the 16,000 to 17,000 ish range for an unstable familiar you're seeing here just do not cut it they're going to be very high risk in any scenario you put them in we have some more off picks that most people don't build but are very very good like coldorn coldorn cannot be baited by Glarsdos. we have stratolumbus here at a max um stable i believe they cannot be baited by Glarsdos, but if they can it's very very close come over here down to our mythic picks Drenith here can be baited by Glarsdos we have Velogder which is more of a support can definitely be baited by Glarsdos um let's see who else here Lurky cannot be baited by Glarsdos which is very big because a lot of people want Lurky they aim for Lurky they say they're gonna make Lurky they are working on Lurky so just know if you went Glarsdos you're gonna need a new bait just for lurky that is what's so unfortunate about that this is what i'm talking about with future pathing you want to make sure that you have a bait that can do the job all the way to the end kazulam which in my opinion is second or third best dps in the game cannot be baited by glarsdos both very very good support dps style familiar cannot be baited by Glarsdos. So just looking at that, you can already see the stat spread on all of these familiars. If we just go back to a lattice, just really quickly, you can see just how many of those picks he can actually bait for, which is probably around 90, 95% of the picks that you are gonna be going through. A lattice is 15-1 at my TS. 15,100 very very good stats for a bait familiar now a lot of people don't like that speed and i don't blame them but the whole point of being a bait is being able to be the bait first of all in the bait role and two you know stay alive and their whole kit from what i see here keeps them alive a bunch of spread heal spread shield of course it's spread but with that heal power and of course that while below health heals received a more effective bone that just makes it a lot easier for him to self-sustain as well as be a very very good support healer role they are just a lot more of a hybrid style than glarsdos is glarsdos very good at staying alive on his own and that is phenomenal don't get me wrong but he has no future pathing at all if you are looking at getting any current tier familiars a lot of those familiars a lot of the good familiars right now have very very low hp okay damage and a lot of agility slash speed that is where everything is mainly focused at so you want to make sure that your bait can actually bait for those familiars 
which is why I truly believe Aladdis is the better pick. Aladdis can again go into fresh tier. Aladdis could also be used as an offensive healer. Aladdis can be used better in pvp in my opinion a lot of this could be used in d4 content because you can take those good dps familiars that you got into that content and utilize them a lot of this can do everything glars dose can do and more glars dose though can shine a little like a little brighter glars dose can shine a little brighter in certain contents like trials and gauntlet if you really need tg and you just feel like your bait's just getting blown up all the time glars dose in my opinion is like top five pick as a bait or tg and that's just my opinion of course i'm i'm talking about like compared to a bunch of other familiars like um thunmolf um you know they're probably like more of like a top 10 so thunmolf Ignatus Raw, uh, Roan Max 600, Turnbot, Crown D, a bunch of like really hard to make high end top of the line first pick draft kind of baits. Those guys, of course, are going to be better, but like on the mid game level where you only have up to a lattice to unlock, I really do think Lars Dos really only shines in TG and quests a little brighter. But a lattice could still get you through those flags. A lattice could still get you through trials and gauntlet. It just depends on your team composition and of course your augment layout. Okay, one more thing I wanted to do before we go ahead and finish off this episode is show you what it takes to make them and why Glarsdos is easier to make than a lattice and why people tend to go for Glarsdos more than a lattice. So if we go back to the schematics and familiars, go to fusion, type in Glars. You see here, Glars only takes three Teal'c and 15 Neural Net ROMs, 15 Epic Materials and 50K Gold. So three Teal'c's, that's already really good because you only have to farm energy, which is something that refills to a very high amount all the time. Very easy to get, very easy to replenish, you know, very, very easy farm. Glarsdos is an easier farm in my opinion than the Aladdis farm. And not only is it easier, if you click on Teal'c and you go to this little locator on the top left, you'll see Teal'c's palace. You click on Teal'c's palace, you see this little treasure chest on the bottom right, you click on that. You can see here that this is a tier five location. What does that mean? That means that you could start farming your Glarsdos at tier five. If you just have knowledge on how many of these you need, you can farm them all up by the time you get the schematic and all the materials to make it and have him ready to go by tier 10, tier 11. Maybe tier 12 if you're going a little slow, but that's fine. The moment you find out about this grind, if you find this out in, in tier 5, you're ready to go and start grinding him, you do that. Always farm your energy. You'll be able to farm Glarsdos super fast, which in my opinion is why people really love the Glarsdos farm. It's so easy. You can start it off very early and it's 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 just a walk in the park. Now, if we go to the Aladdis farm, if we go to the Aladdis schematic. You'll see here that Aladdis takes one Mistral, which is in the quest location. I'll click on him right now. Go to this and you'll see the Obelisk of Mistral. Click on the treasure chest again and you'll see it is a tier 11 zone but you have to beat that zone to unlock tier 12 so it's pretty much tier 12 just like glars doses is pretty much tier 6. this is pretty much a tier 12 farm since you have to beat it which means you unlock the farming capability of this familiar way after glars dose a whole tier or two after at the latest so that's one thing that's really bad with a lattice. Another thing is their second familiar needed. It's only one as well, which means you need less familiars than you would uh, for Glarsdos, but you do need more uh, materials and more gold for them. So there is a little bit of a sacrifice there. The only problem is the second familiar needed. If you click on them and you go to the map, it's minions of Terranus. You click on that, you go to the box on the bottom right and you'll see here that if this is a tier 12 raid this is going to be a tier 12 raid so you have to farm them in raid the good thing is the raid is filled with these guys if you want you could always bribe them which um i personally like doing against familiars that i think will benefit me since they are going to be utilized and it's going to be something i keep around or you can just keep persuading them persuading them, persuading them it might take some time but again, you are going to be farming this for quite a while for the vetoes. It takes 100 each, which this is the hardest part of the farm, the vetoes. You're going to be doing 
hundreds of these raids just to max out your Aladdis. That is a very big reason Glarsdos reigns supreme over Aladdis in a lot of people's eyes. It is a much harder farm. But the good thing about this is a lot of people don't really take into consideration how long some people have to be in certain tiers for certain things. A lot of people want to go for Starweave, which is an ancient located in tier 9. You can just camp tier 12, make your Aladdis if you want, make your Eucalyptus while you're there, which is a damage dealing familiar DPS in the same tier. You can do all that while you up tier your Starweave, um, while you work on things that you want to up tier, while you work on your familiars. A lot of players choose a spot to camp at, and I do truly believe tier 12 or tier 13 is the perfect spot to camp. And that is because you could farm for Aladdis. You could farm for Eucalyptus, you could farm for Penguita, you could farm for Tethius, you could farm for whoever you want. You know, you can also just start farming just things in general. A lot of people tend to camp around this area, and that is why I like a lattice, because you're already going to be here for a while as is. A lot of people get stuck on tier 12, so they're there for a long time regardless. That is why I really like a lattice. A lot of people can get there to tier 12 with just hilarious and decent stat spread and game knowledge. So it's pretty easy to get there. You just have to understand how the game works. You won't struggle anywhere near as much if you watch any of my videos or just ask around in world chat or watch any of Bitverse Andy's videos, any of those people's videos. Just learn how the mechanics of the game work. Learn really good team comp learn strategies like swapping around your characters um there's a bunch of hidden tactics that you can do that a lot of people don't know that could get you pretty far with just epic familiars to get to your legendary familiar farm so this is pretty much going to be the end of the video i personally highly recommend a lattice over glarsdos any day of the week but that's just my opinion of course glarsdos is not a bad familiar they'll do almost everything a lattice can they just aren't future proof and that is the only problem if you have anything you want to say against my opinion feel free to do it in the comments i won't argue with you everyone has their own opinions everyone's a part of one team and the other some people are a part of both i'm a part of both i just lean towards the lattice thank you so much for stopping by this is world leader have a great one guys peace